Welcome back to the homestead everyone. Today we're next to our garden shed. Now I think every homesteader needs a garden shed, but have you ever asked yourself, what the heck do I keep in my garden shed? Especially if you're far away from the other structures on your property. Today, let's take a look inside our garden shed and see what we keep in there. Some really essential tools. Now you would think there was a ton of stuff that you would need to keep in the garden shed. And that's really not true. You don't need a whole ton of things. 90% of the stuff that I use in the garden is in the shed right now. So let's take a look at what I've got in here. Of course, we've got our sprayers. Now, if I could fit 10 more sprayers in here, that'd be great, but these three are very essential. You know, I've got some soap and uh, some soapy water with some neem oil for spraying off a majority of uh, the bugs off the plants here in the garden. I've got some orange oil for those really nasty bugs that don't really care about the neem oil. Some orange oil and water. And I've got some copper solution for those diseases that pop up here and there, the blights, the you know, uh, powdery mildew, whatever it may be, that seems to take care of a lot of them. I've got some other videos on those if you want to go check those out. Hey, and if you're interested, if you love being here on the channel, We'd love to have you here on a permanent basis, so hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So let's check out what else we got here in our garden shed. Like I mentioned, we've got our orange oil. Now this is important to keep out here because we do use a decent amount of it. We have a lot of fire ants here in Texas and this is really important to keep out here. We've got some shelves built in here and we've got our neem oil, of course. We have, like I mentioned, our copper fungicide. And we've got this uh, Captain Jack's dead bug juice. It's really not working that well for us. It didn't work against the uh, thrips that we had on our beans this uh, past summer. So uh, it hasn't worked that great for me. If you had other um, experiences, let me know. And maybe I'm using it on things incorrectly. I did dilute it to the proper dilution though. So, all right, what else do we have in here today? We've got our garden twine. Well, the twisty tie stuff that you can clip off here and any length you want. I love this stuff. I use it on <laughs> so many different things here in the garden. It's unbelievable. So we've got that and we've got these wonderful, wonderful plastic clips here these circular plastic clips. We use these on our raspberries, on our tomatoes. We've used them on peas and peppers and you name it. We've used it. So these are fantastic. Hey, by the way, you can find all these things in our Amazon store. Just go to countrylivingexperience.com and go to our tool store or check the description below and we have a link directly to our Amazon store. It really helps out our family and it doesn't cost you a penny extra, so don't worry about it, all right? What else do we have? We got our Dr. Bronner cell suds and look at that. I think I need to make a, uh, another purchase because I'm almost out of this stuff. This is an organic soap. <clears throat> it's a surfactant and it's great for mixing with that neem oil and even the uh, orange oil here for the garden and it sticks. It really sticks very well and it, uh, it suffocates those bugs. You can even use this just straight with some water and it'll help to suffocate uh, a lot of different pests um, here in the garden. So we've also got, what else do we have? Oh, we've got this, um, you know what? I think I, I talked to you about this the other day on the video that uh, when our, our garden blew down. This is a rapid clip green twine. It's organic. Uh, I don't know what the fibers are made out of, um, but it, if you love things that break down and biodegrade, this is the one for you. And it's really nicely woven and it's got this great dispenser, but it, it broke down so fast for us here in this hot Texas sun. I don't know if I'm going to use it again. I'm still debating. I like it, but you know, I had a lot of tomato plants just come crashing down. We do have them on that tall trellis. If you didn't see that video, you know, go check that out. Uh, but it, the sun really beat it up and really, it biodegrades really quick. But if you're into that, this is your stuff. All right, we've got 
what else we got here? We definitely have, we've got some rubbing alcohol in a, a cloth. And what that is for is when you're pruning, and here we've got some pruning shears. We always keep these in, in here as well. When you're pruning, you definitely want to clean your blades between different uh, plants, especially if they're different species, because you can transfer disease on your pruning shears or whatever cutting implement you're using. So having a rag and some alcohol here to wipe that off is really essential. All right, let's see what else we got. We've got a uh, pH and moisture chest tester just so we can continuously monitor our soil for uh, those things. We've got some bug repellent for us. We've got some amendments. Now we've got some uh, uh, that uh, sea salt, a C90 sea salt. And that is incredibly great for adding a ton of trace minerals into your soil. We've got that in the Amazon store. We, I don't think we have this. We buy this at our local uh, feed store. This is kelp meal. And it's incredible for, for adding nitrogen and potash to your soil. This is a great amendment to have for your soil. And of course, last but not least, in here, Epsom salts. Keep them around all the time for the garden. All right. We've got some other uh, string in here. This is some uh, contractor's string. We use the tie back. Like we've got our, uh, over here to my left, we've got our tall asparagus just pulled back and tied to the fence because it gets four or five feet tall and drapes all over the place and gets kind of out of control. I always keep a couple of extra cans in here. Ooh, big spider in that one. Uh, this one happens to be my, my daughter's uh, baby formula can, but just to hold things. That's great. I always save cans and bottles and things like that. We've got a couple of old cups and actually in this cup we do have another amendment. This is calcium. Uh, pot, some powdered calcium in here and uh, we just use that mostly on our tomatoes to pre prevent uh, blossom end rot. But obviously you can use it for other vegetables for blossom end rot. And adding calcium to, soil, to your soil is really important. We've got some tin foil here, and I use that to wrap around the base of our squash plants to prevent, uh, especially in, in zucchini, uh, vine borer beetles. And if you wrap that around the bottom of that uh, plant when it's coming up, it'll prevent those borer beetles from getting in there. So I always keep that in here. All right, what else do we got? We have got a pair of pruners. You wouldn't think you use these a lot. These are like, you know, for trimming bushes in the house. No, I use these a lot here in the garden to trim back plants that just get crazy out of control, i.e. our oregano just goes nuts uh, out here and our bee balm and our lemon balm. And those things just get out of hand really, really fast. And our sweet potatoes. Oh, wow. Our sweet potatoes. I need to go do that after this video because our sweet potatoes They've way overgrown the area that we planted, probably 30 by 10, and they're out in the yard, and they're down near the peanuts, and they're out in the aisle towards our peas. Out of control. But that, these are great to have in the garden. Really, really handy. Uh, we've also got a trowel and a baby garden fork here uh, to help us in transplanting. And just for general weed control, these are very, very helpful to keep in here. Also, the big ones we have got, oh, well, let's go here. Usually we keep um, some other ones in here, but we've got our, uh, one of our garden sprayers here. We have a different one on the hose right now, but we use three or four different types depending on what we need to do in the garden. But this wand sprayer is very soft um, shower nozzle on it is, is very nice to have handy. So we'll keep extra parts and pieces for those things that we have in the garden out here. All right, stirrup hoe. I love these things for weeding, doing a quick weeding. Just gets under the soil and clips off um, all those nasty weeds that are just starting to come up and it's very, very handy for your tilled area. Doesn't work in the uh, back to Eden garden portion of our garden, but this is great for having for the tilled area. Also, of course, Spade shovel. What can you say? Everybody needs a spade shovel, right? And a pitchfork. 
Now, six tine, 10 tine, up to you. I don't mind the 10 tine. It works really well for me for what I use, especially the wood chips for the back to Eden garden. A 10 tine is better. Six tine doesn't work because uh, the wood chips just fall through it. But this 10 tine works great for that. And it works great for my compost pile if I need to flip it or turn it and or put in a wheelbarrow and bring it here. The shovel doesn't work, this works well. And last but not least, our garden fork, or our, sorry, our garden rake. Uh, this, you'll notice, is very, very good. And, oh, you'll notice, you'll remember from the original Back to Eden creator, Paul Gauchi, uh, in the Back to Eden style, he uses this rake a ton, and that's pretty much all he uses. He uses it to weed, he uses it to pull back the, um, the wood chips to get a good planting uh, medium, i.e. down into the compost, planting medium, for, uh, for his plants, and then he rakes the wood chips back up around it. So we use this a ton here in the Back to Eden portion of the garden. You know, beyond that, sometimes I do have a few other things out, out here uh, for the garden. One thing would be actually wire. I don't have my roll of wire. I actually took it back to the barn. And we do have some pliers to twist that wire. So we've got some pliers. We've got a, uh, usually lineman pliers. Uh, so we, we have the clipper on it to clip the wire. So we combined, you know, these um, T-posts to the cattle panels or whatever it may be. But that is really it, guys. You don't need much in your garden shed. And those things that I've got in here, I use 90% of the time, like I said, and there's, I rarely have to make a walk or a trek back all the way up to the barn or all the way up to the house to get anything else because it's all right here in this little two by three foot shed. Hey, I forgot to mention, if you want to see how we made this shed, go check out our video on the Japanese uh, wood preservation. That is the video where we actually make, it's actually a dual video, Japanese wood preservation, the So Shugiban, and how to make this great freestanding garden shed for not a lot of cash. And it's been such a blessing here in the garden. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for sticking around here watching us on the channel, subscribing, and we want you here all the time, all of you. We've got, we're closing in on 10,000 subscribers and I'm so excited and so thankful. And hopefully we'll continue to grow from there. And I'd love for you to share the video if you find it helpful. Thank you so much. Have a great day and we will see you on the next video. Bye.